Sunday, we are going to touch an important topic, something that the Ministry of Education has been talking for a very long time, especially after the buzzword called as NEP 2020, called as competency-based education. I would like to welcome all the teachers who have joined for the first time with the session, with, with the Super Sunday workshop. Uh, we conduct this on a regular basis every Sunday, and it's not mandatory for you to participate at all. You can just switch this on and get an exposure towards the, the latest updates and trends in technologies, especially with respect to Indian education system. Uh, this purpose of conducting the workshop is solely only for the fact that there are multiple documents which are quite huge in nature. Probably in one hour or maximum 45 to 50 minutes, you get a gist about what's happening out there. That awareness and exposure will make you a better speaker you know, uh, in, in a particular forum or among your friends and and gossip about stuff in education system. And that's that's really a nice thing. So we have reflection forms coming right after the session, um, probably at around 10, 40, 45, it will be launched. You have to fill the reflection form, which has got all the uh, questions as well. You need to answer some, some questions. Based on that, the certificates are released to all the participants out there. So today, the topic is going to be on competency-based education. We've been looking into Super Sunday Workshop for the last one year, and competency-based education has been spoken al already in the past. Today, we'll try to see some updates on where India has gone, what led to competency-based competency education today, uh, what is that word or what is the meaning of competency with respect to uh, our education system, why there are so many definitions present out there on YouTube videos or Google or whichever information platform that you're getting into. Uh, everybody defines competency-based education as per their own terms. What does our education system or uh, Indian education system talks about? We're going to touch upon all these things. I would like to actually begin the session today with a video by Nishtha. Uh, again, uh, one of the important videos on what competency-based education is. And in that scenario, it's a very just a small gist. I would also request all the teachers, if you really want to get into the details of uh, competency-based education, understand the way it works and functions, I would request you to do the course on Diksha portal. It's a very good course. Approximately, you take two hours to three hours to complete it if you go in you know, too much detail. Otherwise, it's quite easy to complete it. So Diksha portal, already competency-based education course is there. However, I'll make sure that whatever we speak today has got much broader view of uh, the competency-based education. So in that case, let's quickly start with the session today. I would like to thank all the teachers once again. If your colleagues or if your friends are not able to participate, it's because the meeting limit is 500 and it's already it's already there uh, reached. So you can share the YouTube link, which will be coming on the chat in a few seconds uh, for your colleagues to participate. And for that, I would like to request you to please click on the YouTube link, which is there on the chat right away you can pass this on to your colleagues in case if they are saying that they are not able to join uh, the name of the course is called as competency-based education ma'am and this is how it looks like okay got it yes i think you got it and uh, this is how it looks like and finally let me share my screen sharing the audio as well and yes great so actually, competency-based education as a terminology became quite prevalent only after NEP 2020. Now, what did NEP 2020 actually mention about, you know, that it became so prevalent? In fact, in fact, some experts also say that in one line, if I have to define NEP 2020. So they say that NEP 2020 is basically the new education policy 2020 is the shift of the learning process from rote learning to competency-based learning. I'll repeat it. NEP 2020 is, is a policy, set of policy that aims to move the learning process, shift the learning process from rote learning to competency-based learning. What do they mean by it? Let's understand that eventually in another 40 minutes. Uh, I'll be referring a lot of government websites, including CBSE for that matter. I would request you to please make a note of it. If possible, please watch the same video again on YouTube a little later. It's not confusing at all, but too much of an information will be there. That's the reason. So here comes the first video by Nishtha. It's our video. It's our video. Please watch this. In today's education system, we find that all children entering a particular class are expected to learn the course contents in a stipulated time. The weekly tests, 
half yearly and annual exams are scheduled on fixed times. Most of the lessons are textbook based and the focus of the teachers is on covering the defined syllabus. Same type of instructions are given to the entire class. Differences in the levels of language skills, visual motor skills, social readiness, varied levels of oral language development and diversity in home atmosphere may result in different types of learners having different learning needs. This system of education does not take into account the diverse contexts and backgrounds, languages and differential learning needs with which children enter the school. But the learning in student is variable. Some learn concepts very fast, some require more practice. Therefore, there is a need to shift towards competency based education or CBE. What exactly is competency based education? Although there is no single universally accepted definition of competency based education, but there are certain common elements in programs based on competency based education. CBE tries to shift the emphasis on how the time is allotted for learning to how children demonstrate the competencies. The competencies are well defined and fixed to ensure that each child acquires the foundational learning, but the time spent and pathways of learning will be different for each child. The students, teachers and parents know what are the competencies or expectations of learning which helps teachers and students to plan what they need to teach and learn and track their progress. The defined competencies help students understand the key concepts apply knowledge to the meaning of problems and leads to Processor, sorry to interrupt you. Yes, Fatih, please tell me. Is there any possibility to increase the volume? Sorry, teachers, this is the maximum volume. It is from the uh, YouTube portal of Nishtha. So, this yes. is the maximum. So, In CBD, I'm so sorry. Students know what they need to learn and how they will be assessed. When students experience any difficulty, the teachers and students address the problem. Formative assessment is used, which is aimed to help children acquire the competencies. Teachers determine where each child is in the learning process and adjust their teachings as necessary. Formative assessment gives teachers the ability to adjust in real time by clearly identifying the key areas where students need to improve. Students are taught and supported based on their personal strengths and weaknesses, giving each individual student the same chance for success. The pedagogy is based on activities, experiences, integration of arts, sports, technology, etc., and connecting the learning to real life situations so that the child learns to apply knowledge. Uh, so that's with respect to a brief understanding. I, I understand that the audio was not that clear with respect to this, ma'am. And anyways, the subtitles or the instructions were there on the right. As this is the government video, I really wanted to play this. Um, now, for all the teachers who have been saying that you're not able to hear this, let me share this video link right away to you and you can watch this little later. And for that, I need a second over here. It's, it's, it's a small part of a bigger video. And you can see that on the chat right away. And uh, here we go. This is by Nishta Portal. Uh, so in, in three to four minutes, ma'am had spoken something about competency-based education. And that's what we're going to understand right now. Uh, there are other uh, video representations as well, which I'll be playing right now in a few seconds. Uh, so we'll get the complete clarity on what exactly she was talking about. Now, what she actually meant with respect to competency-based education is uh, two important features that was highlighted is the ability to learn whatever you want whenever you want. So the ability to learn whatever you want, whenever you want is one important feature of competency-based education. How about let's come up with an example. Uh, you know, for example, Shalini ma'am out there does not like to learn about maths. She's like, I've spent all my life, 10 standard I've done, 12 standard I've done. I don't really like maths, but I want to get into commerce. Now here in this case, can you really get into commerce without liking maths? 
you have an aspiration to become a financial person some some really a chief financial officer of a very big organization probably but you're not that really interested in mathematics it it it's actually very imperative that you have to know mathematics and somewhere uh, you need to come up with a methodology to you know like it so in this particular case what we can do is right after graduation if shalini ma'am is allowed or it's right after 12th standard if she is allowed to learn mathematics of grade 6 to 10 or 6 to 12 once again in some institute let's not you know get into the details some institute if she wants to spend one year just learning on maths and then she comes back when she comes back to join the graduation the university where she is going to join they should not ask her why, why did you separately learn this you know uh, they should allow her to continue her education this is not true only for 12th standard and then the graduation this is also applicable for a student in 8th standard if an 8th standard student says that i would like to have social studies uh, you know learned probably in 2 years because i'm not able to understand the history i need more time to understand but i'm able to complete the mathematics part of 8th standard that also within 3 months so this particular child let's assume this child to be vaishali uh, she says that within 3 months i'm able to complete the maths part of it and uh, that's quite an irony shalini ma'am so 3 months mein vaishali is able to complete the maths but uh, she's not able to complete the Uh, you know social part so according to our education system right now can we really allow shalini to study uh, oh, sorry vaishali to study social science for 2 years and vaishali to study uh, you know 8th standard maths is completed within 3 months so let me start with 9th standard maths right now so we do not have that our our system is time bound right now it means that one year you need to complete only after completing one year you get to the next class right but according to competency based education system we should allow that and it's going to be a gradual process a very gradual process maybe because of this competency based education policy maybe to define competency education policy properly uh, we got the credit system in credit system they spoke about one very nice thing you remember eighth standard may a child can go out they can learn whatever skills they want to and they can come back and join ninth standard maybe credit happened because of this so the policy nep 2020 says that we need to have competency based education government goes through the policies of sorry the meaning and and the definition of what is competency based education system and based on those features of competency based education our further policies are defined that is our new national curriculum framework is defined that is how the credit system came into picture that is how importance to skill education came into picture so it's all the derivation from the policy so the point here is what i'm trying to emphasize over here is competency based education emphasizes on whatever you want to learn whenever you want to learn can be accessed at any time the second important aspect of competency based education that she was mentioning is the connection with real life example for that i would like to show you one quick example uh, i think this will be quite relate relatable to all of us over here and for that great you should be able to see my screen in few seconds great so now this is a chapter on uh, microsoft excel so this is a computer book and in this particular computer book they are talking about microsoft excel now in order to learn about microsoft excel uh, you know for a grade 5 student for example they are going to take a real life context over here for example you can look at this dmart is a chain of supermarkets that operates in india you know that i think some of you would have already gone to dmart if not then i think you can google about it it's one of the leading chains and there are many others actually metro is there dmart is there but dmart something nice app happened actually so their idea was to connect uh, uh, you know consumers to directly manufacturers basically have the bridge between manufacturers and consumers so that you know you cut the middlemen uh, and and you reduce the cost of your commodity or the product to a large extent and this made sure that nearly 15 to 18 rupees nearly 20 rupees in fact for i'm talking about the grains especially the rice the price was comparatively lesser people started flocking towards a uh, demand and uh, it was a massive hit but after 6 to 7 months of its advertising people started going there uh, there are some people let's let's example there are some people for example nandini ma'am or uh, seema ma'am or you know sharda ma'am whenever they look into dmart it's always crowded because the cost is less people flock there they're like 
instead of going there and suffering in the crowd, especially in the sun, let me spend 10, 15 rupees extra and buy the rice from the nearby uh, local market, something like that. So automatically over the period of time, DMART's sales went down. People did not like it because of the crowd. Now, the person who started with the mod came up with an amazing idea. So they started writing, uh, uh, you know, they took a very simple step of writing the number of people who are coming on each day at each particular time. Monday, 150 people had come. Tuesday, 350 people had come. Wednesday, 500 people had come. Thursday, only 200 had come. And once you enter these details from Monday to Sunday, they generated a graph out of it, which can be done on Excel. And this graph was pasted right outside DMART and people started looking at it. Oh, Monday last week, you know, Sharda is like, it was really crowded. Let me go on Tuesday. Now, the next week, many people would have thought like Sharda, right? Automatically, the crowd got increased on Tuesday. Again, the chart got changed for the next week. It was placed again and people are like, oh, the crowd is really high on Tuesday. Let me go on Wednesday. In this particular manner, whenever the crowd was less, the people were invited inside without even communicating. So this marketing strategy helped DMART regain, uh, uh, you know, their 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 uh, customer base once again, and and the people started coming. Now the point here is, teachers, this chapter begins with DMART a question. Basically, the heavy rush caused inconvenience to both the customers and the co-workers, store workers. To help with the situation, he took a simple step, which was very successful. What was that step he took and why was it successful? Now, without even talking about the solution, the chapter talks about what is Excel. We talk about various aspects of, uh, you know, calculations and this and that on Excel. And finally, when the chapter gets over, finally, when the chapter gets over, I would like to go to the last page of the chapter. There it is clearly mentioned. In fact, there is a picture of the graph. So this is the last page of the chapter. So here, now that we understand how the teacher could have easily answered the principal's question, forget about that. Let's get back to the problem at the DMART store and how the manager solved it. He took the data of the number of customers visiting stores at different times of the day during the weekends. Then with the help of the spreadsheet software like Excel, he converted the data into a graph. And this particular graph led uh, to a clarity for the people on, um, you know, uh, how to come back to the DMART. So the point over here is in order to learn about Microsoft Excel, Unless and until I don't have that need, the requirement that I can feel, that I can really understand, I'm not going to learn M M MS Excel. In fact, here also most of the people out there, you will not join a particular session or you will not conduct a particular class unless and until there is a need for it. Some need could be I really want to learn and upgrade myself so that I can talk to my principals nicely, so that I can get myself promoted to the next class, so that I can clear my teacher eligibility test. There is going to be some requirement, some need. And this need has to be related, relatable to the student's surroundings. And that's how the real life example over here comes under one of the features of competency-based education. So we saw two of them. One was the student agency. That means learn whatever you want, whenever you want. The first point. Second was with respect to real life scenarios. There are four more features that we will be getting into. But before getting into the next part of what competency based education is, let's understand from another case study. It's not a case study. Basically, it's from MIT. MIT is another leading um, institute in the world, I would say which uh, you know talks about various aspects of teaching. This is called as MIT teaching systems. I think you're able to see the screen in another uh, 10 seconds. Yes, here you are. You'll be able to see in one. Great. I think the audio of this particular video will be really good. Yes. Please watch this, teachers. Hi. My name is Justin Reich, and I'm a professor at MIT, and I'm the director of the Teaching Systems Lab, where we design, implement, and research the future of teacher learning. We're interested in how schools grow and change, and how teachers learn throughout their careers. When school systems get excited about approaches to school change, like competency-based education, or CBE, we think it's a great opportunity to engage with educators and to learn more about their beliefs about teaching and learning, and what they think the future of schools should look like. Across the US and around the world, schools are experimenting with CBE. For example, our lab is located in the New England region of the United States, where several state legislatures have passed competency-based education legislation and policy with mixed results. Some districts have found these policies to be catalysts for rethinking teaching and learning in powerful student-centered ways. 
and others have found the demands for change too difficult or found that adopting competency-based strategies doesn't address the underlying problems that CBE has the potential to address. What exactly is competency-based education? There's no single agreed-upon definition, but we see some common elements in programs that call themselves competency-based. Most school curricula today are organized around how much time students spend in different courses. The amount of time that students spend, say, in math class is fixed. 52 minutes for factoring polynomials, 180 days for algebra, four years of high school math. But the learning is variable. Some students master the material and many don't. Competency-based education tries to shift the emphasis from how time is allotted to whether or not students can demonstrate well-defined competencies. Here, the competencies are fixed, a commitment that every student will master the fundamentals, but the time invested and the learning pathways vary from student to student. To master competencies, students need to know what the competencies are. Teachers in schools make competencies explicit and help students track their progress towards those competencies. Students use the competencies as a map to the content and skills that they need to learn in school. Assessment of these competencies is an ongoing process rather than a single summative event. In schools today, if a student fails a test, the class often keeps moving forward through new material. In competency-based environments, students are often given more than one opportunity to demonstrate competency and extra support as needed. If a student fails a test or a section of a test, it means that they need more support there so those shortcomings don't keep compounding as the concepts get more complicated. In the very best implementations of CBE, these elements together mean that students and teachers know what they need to teach and learn. Students have some choice and agency in how they learn and how they demonstrate their learning. When students struggle, teachers and students work together to address the problem rather than continuing along and hoping that students will figure it out later. One challenge in understanding competency-based education is a proliferation of terms and definitions. We use the term competency-based education, but people referring to proficiency-based learning or mastery-based learning are often talking about similar things. Some learning competencies look very similar to learning objectives that you might see for an individual subject or class. For example, list the different parts of a plant cell and describe functions of major organelles. While other things called competencies are much larger in scope and less tied to particular subject matter, for example, present ideas concisely and clearly using visual material to illustrate key points. Educators and others are still trying to figure out the right size and scope for competencies in competency-based education. For some schools, competency-based education is a way of refining traditional aspects of teaching and learning. My own kids go to an elementary school that uses a competency-based report card, which lists competencies in math and reading and art and social behavior. However, most of the instruction is pretty traditional, meaning lots of small group work and instruction directed at the whole class, but quite good instruction. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Thanks, Ms. Case. For other schools, competency-based education is a way for the schools to dramatically rethink time in and out of the classroom, schedules, assessments, project, instructions, and to rethink the skills graduates need to succeed. In many of the best implementations, a key focus is on issues of equity. How do we build systems where when kids are struggling and not mastering foundational skills, we as educators can identify what supports they need to be ready for the challenges of the future? We know that any institutional change is hard. It requires strategic thinking and a commitment of resources, time, and energy. And it involves frustration, resistance, and challenges. We wanted to make these issues part of the conversation and to give you the tools to consider not only the nature of CBE in general, but what it can mean for your own thinking about teaching, learning, and school change. Our goal is to give you a taste of the range of approaches to competency-based education that schools are exploring. We want to help you understand what problems competency-based education is trying to solve, how different schools are implementing competency-based education in response to those problems, and the opportunities these different implementations present. We want to empower you to think critically about all of this experimentation and to identify what approaches might be worth trying in your own contexts.
so here in this case the remaining four features of competency based education was kind of discussed and uh, this is by mit teaching uh, mit teaching systems lab now teachers across the globe have been working on competency based education and they are trying to understand what exactly this is they know that there is something unique about it they know that this is how the teaching has to be but they are not able to confine a single definition under one umbrella and that that particular discussion research has to continue and and that continuation will lead us to lot of further technologies or pedagogies or different sorts of curriculum out there one nice point spoken over here was with respect to uh you know equity now when we talk about equality in a school system we just think about uh, the the creed or the caste or the race from which the students are coming back no here the equality is from knowledge perspective equality in the sense there are 40 students in the class all are taught the same thing all are given with the same books but the point over here is are they all learning the same way if the learning happens the same way that means you have just given the resource but the process of learning is definitely not the same children with multiple backgrounds come to the class some children you know when they go back home they don't really have the facilities uh, to access an internet and explore further about the topic so what could be done in order to support that particular child that's equity they are talking about in pre like precisely if i have to convert that in the form of competency based education they are in that time trying, trying to say that if there is a particular child who's not able to learn something which his friend was able to do just because of you know some extra resources available over there or lack of some resources you know over here in that case we can allow this particular child to study for one more month on that particular chapter and allow the child to take his own time in writing the exam well that cannot be possible in india considering one year of grading system so you you have to complete grade 5 by 8 months right now if you do that then how can this uh, time allotment be uh, you know possible but there are some schools out there who are allowing this to happen in fact in our credit system also double promotion is still a possibility so we are moving towards that and this is quite a nice point that i really like just imagine you know all of a sudden mallingo is like is waking up and he's like i don't feel like studying ninth standard today i would like to take one more year and then score better marks in 10th standard that's any time better than scoring something low and then using that marks as an identity throughout the life right anyways so this is with respect to another point of uh, you know mid teaching system let me quickly summarize uh, this thing not the session not the session we have got long way to go right now because we need to talk from cbse perspective as well so this particular slide could be one small uh, representation of the summary of whatever we have understood so basically key features of competency based education system clear learning outcomes so students should exactly know what they're going to learn always remember teachers whenever there is an education system defined for the first time the first document that comes out is the learning outcomes having undergone you know a syllabus under cbsc board this is what the learning outcome will be having undergone a syllabus under the icc board this is what my learning outcome will be now this is designed defined by the policy makers so learning outcomes is the first document that gets released and based on that further learning objectives are designed so basically learning outcome is the overarching umbrella under that there are multiple learning objectives for every topic in fact student centered learning so it is completely as per the students requirements i would like to prioritize so and so subject competency based assessment is another huge topic in fact the whole of this actually started because of an assessment which we will discuss little later real life orientation is very very important the the meaning over here is to relate to an environment which the children are already exposed to we cannot give an example of say something the student would have never seen for example i can't talk about say uh, nasa to kg students i can't talk about say isro to grade 1 or 2 students if they have not known about it or if they know about it that's great so the relevance of a particular example is basically the real life scenario then right after that flexible learning pathways is like after 8th standard i would like to take a break learn about electrical maintenance or music for that matter and come back and continue my 9th standard now that's a possibility according to our education system already in place transparency and accountability the most important so basically under transparency and accountability uh, a student should be free enough to tell their learning pathways so this is how i came through i did not complete my 10th standard i i directly did my 12th standard 
something like that. I'm just coming up with a bizarre statement. Maybe this is not appropriate for Indian education system. But the point is learning pathways or the method of learning or everything should be clearly visible. Uh, I mean, you don't have to hide anything. Sometimes, you know, you can take a break from your education, go get married, have a life for three or four years, and then can continue your education. In graduation, this is actually possible right now, especially in B.Ed. You know that, right? So these are some of the things or key, 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 key features of competency-based education. Sorry, I rolled over there. Yeah, so this is the most important. Now comes something really interesting, which I would like to stop share the screen. Another 10 minutes and you will understand everything. So with respect to competency-based education, we saw the features. Uh, we understood why is it important a little bit, you know, with respect to features. But how did it all start? Let's quickly understand that. Some of you might already know this. How did it all start? Now, uh, let's take an example of, say, Jyoti Ma'am, Jyoti Sharma. Okay. So Jyoti Ma'am uh, is born somewhere in 19... 40s somewhere around that time so right after independence when she went to the school the teacher started uh, explaining jyoti ma'am a particular topic and said that uh, write this particular paragraph which is there in the textbook two times in your notebook and come back do you remember doing something like this in your past i'm not sure if you have done this but ask your parents or if possible if you can remember what you have done in the past there were times when homeworks were given just to repeat the content that was present in the textbook more like to reinforce the concept. In fact, uh, uh, you also give, uh, uh, you know, the students an assignment where you say that, write the definition of photosynthesis five times in your notebook, six times in your notebook. Why did we do that? Because maybe some teacher would have done that and you were like, that's a good method, so let me also do it. So that you replicate the same memorized stuff in the exam and you get full marks for it. So that was more like, and uh, the punishments used to be called as uh symposium what was that uh you have to repeat the same thing at least 100 times what is it called as i'm forgetting the name Sim symposium no not symposium uh, imposition thank you so much <laughs> I'm, i forgot that word called as imposition i i would have got that imposition so many times and I really want to meet the teachers who gave me that today. I'm super angry on that. The point is impositions were given on the students so that they can reinforce the concepts repeatedly, even for the punishment point of view. But why was this necessary? Jyoti ma'am, when she's going to go to the school and when she's doing the same work, the necessity of this particular work was directly related to the industry requirements. Back in those days, which was the first industrial revolution, right after independence, whenever people had to go and work over there, the people who had the capacity to remember the complete steps of some development process. It could be, say, bread baking process. There is an industry called as, you know, bread baking and, and they need to rem remember the complete process. Only when they remember the complete process, they'll be able to understand, oh, this bread is coming after two or three steps. Now my job is to package it and, and put the label on it so that it goes to the next. So the process was clearly defined and people had to remember the steps. And it's not one or two steps. There used to be thousands and thousands of steps. So the industry requirements indirectly community, communicated to the school system that you will have to remember lots and lots. Then came the mathematical part of it. You had to be better at calculations. Uh, in the second industrial revolution, majorly it was about uh, you know accountancy, finance. It was always there, but this time uh, the need got increased to quite some extent because of one device which came into existence called as computers. And because of this, people started learning mathematics in and out. And, and they, they I think uh, you might remember there used to be a quiz or challenge on tables. Immediately, the question is like, uh, you know, 18 into 7. What do you mean? Like, how much is that? Uh, 24 into 35. I'm not sure if you've done that or if you've undergone. If you've undergone such kind of quizzes, you can please put it on the chat. So this, this was the second industrial revolution. Communicating to the schools that... Jyoti Sharma has to learn maths properly. So whenever there was a change in the industry that was getting reflected over here, whenever the industry required memorizing and mugging up, the schools also emphasized on that, indirectly giving birth to something called as rote learning. I hope you are getting the picture. Yes, mental number dodging, dodging tables, you're absolutely right. Random tables, let me quickly share my screen. So more or less the skill of remembering, you know, was required in the industrial age. Remembering and understanding the basic language, science, maths, accounting, and a few other stuff. In fact, once employed in a factory, if a particular person is employed, he or she will be trained with some tasks which need to replicate throughout the day, throughout their career. 
so rote learning was more of a requirement so considering the contemporary need and novelty of many disciplines in british india the suitable learning method was rote learning now there was there is no educator who is not aware of the term rote learning and its substitute methods of modern world still the reality is our education system is dominantly dependent on rote learning even now though there is a massive change in the industry the change is so fast that students like jyoti sharma are not able to adapt and the teachers who are teaching jyoti sharma are not able to understand so somewhere rote learning is still prevalent and the main culprit over here for rote learning to be still existing is not the concept in itself it is the way we test the students the assessments plays an important role unless and until i don't change my question paper the pattern of my assessments the system can never change that is the reason this time that is the reason this time uh nep 2020 heavily emphasized on competency based assessments which we will touch upon probably in the next uh, super sunday workshop and give a conclusion to what exactly competency based system is then national curriculum framework 2005 came up with a very good uh, framework to say that no let's go away from rote learning to uh, 21st century skills they came up with creativity collaboration communication and critical thinking yeah these were some of the terms used in 2005 and then even philly things got changed little by little little by little and something amazing happened in the year 2009 in 2009 there was an organization that came to india and it conducted an exam called as i think you know that 73 countries participated and india secured an amazing rank which people were shocked about and the rank was 72 and this particular exam was called as the pisa test p i s a i think you might remember program for international students assessment yes it was conducted by an organization called as organization for economic cooperation and development oecd the moment india secured a rank 72 the ministry of education was surprised shocked what is happening my children we thought they're securing amazing ranks multiple things but how come they're not able to score a good mark over here so that led to i'll repeated that led to reformations in education so what was the reformation people who went left our country were called back in fact some of them was uh, the british council uk and eric and all of these people they came back and they helped in understanding uh, the 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 uh, uh, you know current problems now those current problems that were mentioned they were corrected a little bit teachers they were corrected a little bit and that corrected document is called as nep 2020 so i'm being little fast with respect to the history just for the convenience of time i'll quickly repeat it industry revolution industry required rote learning school also had rote learning industry required mathematical application school also required mathematical application industries required computers and automations automatically all the computers and automation system started happening even in the schools i'll repeat it education system has to properly change as per the needs and requirements of my industry that's what was happening but somewhere in the process right after internet coming into picture the speed at which the industry started changing school education system could not change at that speed and in order to uh, you know this in order to make sure this properly happens uh, uh people came up with multiple methodologies one was the national curriculum framework in which there was a better communication the focus was not only on rote learning but various other critical thinking aspects but that was not enough and this not enough was realized by the country when there was an exam conducted called as uh, oecd exam or oh, sorry pisa exam by oecd india participated in this exam i think then the minister education minister was kapil sibal if i'm not wrong it happened in 2009 in academic academic year and india realized that our education system needs a massive change and they they started understanding the results of pisa and they called some people who were really good for example british council was called some other people were also called uk narik cambridge they all came and they said that let's understand the problem with india they wrote all the problems and submitted it to the government of india the government saw all the problems and they started writing the corrective measures that corrective measure document that we are talk talking about is actually called as nep 2020 so nep 2020 has emerged as a highly anticipated master plan to completely transform indian education system so based on the vision and recommendations of nep 2020 the best approach that has been envisaged is competency based education i think now you are able to understand how the competency based education system came into picture so this 
for this so these are the people basically british council uk naric cbc in collaboration with all these people came up with multiple documents so when i click on each and every document it gets opened up on a separate tab and uh, you can see the complete details on the report submitted by these people now coming back uh, to this so they also have a very good video this particular video i'm not playing right now considering the time but i would like to share this video a little later with all of you otherwise i can do that right now i'll stop sharing the screen and, and uh, here we go and you will get to see this eventually and yeah so i hope you are able to see that on the zoom chat yes please watch this video whenever you get time hopefully right after the session right after the session you'll get to understand uh, how the collaboration actually happened uh, and with with this came uh, the competency based education system let's quickly understand what exactly competency based system is uh, and that's going to be the last slide uh, here we are going to define what is competency when we talk about any learning process teachers when we talk about any learning process it involves three important things i think we all know about it the first one is called as the knowledge the second is the skill and the third is the attitude people say na do the job that you really love they they mean to say that you need to have the right attitude when you're doing something when they say that whenever you are learning something try to apply that in your real life when they say that they actually mean that they're talking about the skills that are involved now whenever you are learning something they say that it's the knowledge have the complete information about it so knowledge skill and attitude put together is called as competency some students might be really good with knowledge they might be very good with skill as well but whenever they do the a particular task they might not be really interested to do it so they learned out of some sort of a force and that is why they didn't have the right attitude so they might not become a competent person in the future now what do you mean by that let's come up with one example so right combination with respect to solving real life problems that's why it's called as knowledge skill and attitude which is called as competency a quick example that some of you might have already seen this because of attending our sessions in the past now let's as assume that let's assume that uh kavita ma'am is a doctor nearby and uh, i am not well you know i'm not well so kavita ma'am is a doctor nearby i go to kavita ma'am and say that i'm not well the first thing that she'll be doing is diagnosing me so asking what happened what is the temperature did you check your pressure and things like that based on that uh, she is able to come to a conclusion what my problem could be now this is called as the knowledge the questions with which she is able to derive you know the conclusion here in this case uh, i was concluded that i am going to get an injection done right now uh, with some medicine and it will get solved so this particular doctor which is kavita over here she needs to have the complete knowledge of medicine knowledge of veins and arteries but when we talk about the skill she should have the skill of finding the veins removing the air bubbles from the injection injecting the medicine in the right way she should know that that is called as the skill part of it more importantly just imagine kavita ma'am had a fight with her husband at home and she's super angry in this particular mood in this particular environment will she be able to properly use the injection on me no i think the injection might become a knife in few seconds it could be like this is it just go get lost the point here is whenever you're talking about the injection you need to have the right attitude for that you need to have peace of mind of course attitude towards the patient's fear reaction and pain attitude towards the disposal disposable vial basically so once you have that this combination only then kavita is a good doctor sometimes you might have come across a situation where you uh, uh, you know say that uh, this doctor is really good very very experienced but you uh, know he is little rude have you come across such kind of a situation sometimes this doctor talks very nicely very smiling face but he always gives the same tablets you would have come across so the point here is when we talk about these doctors uh, you know definitions basically so the knowledge skill attitude the ksa all the three put together accounts to something called as competency the right mixture and every profile requires a certain sort of mixture uh, and that defines how competent one person is with respect to other there could be multiple mathematics teachers in the same school but everybody has got their own competency some might have lot of knowledge not that great skill but very good attitude 
some might have very very good uh, uh, you know skill sets but not that great of a knowledge and a little less attitude so this combination is really important our assessment pattern should change towards judging a particular person based on competency and just not on knowledge skill and attitude attitude to vaise bhi there is no measurement happening in india right now but but with respect to competency the system has to change so how do we ask such kind of questions how do we understand the competency all these things we'll learn in the upcoming session the next session called as competency based assessments what are the different types already the circular got released that nearly 70% of our question paper in in 25 26 board pattern is going to be on competency based assessment system basically the multiple choice question why mcqs how are they defined how are they designed what are those different types of questions all those things we will try to understand in the next session so quickly the first thing that we saw is a nishtha video on which we quickly understood what exactly nishtha is talking about basically two features anybody can learn whenever they want to learn whatever they want to learn also with respect to real life examples then we saw another video with respect to mit teaching systems lab where they emphasized on student agency the time boundedness of competency based education the research that's happening in various locations so that is with respect to the second video we understood the key features on a separate slide right after that we understood the rote learning methodologies with respect to the requirement in the industry jyoti sharma was the student at that particular time based on the developments in the industry indian education system was also changing and finally finally the exam that was conducted in the year 2009 organization for economic cooperation and development conducted an exam called as pisa with which india realized that we are still following the rote learning methodologies we need to change something how do we change that let's seek the support of some eminent organization some of them were british council uk naric cambridge alpha plus etc etc they came and they they just did some document which said that these are the problems the problems were corrected by indians and that corrected document today is called as nep 2020 and that is why when we began with the statement in the session that nep 2020 in simple words is is a shift of rote learning to competency based learning i hope you got an understanding of what exactly competency based learning is teachers it's it's quite a nice topic i think uh, one good part of competency is still it's not clearly defined in many occasions in many places so it gives lot of liberty for all of us to uh, in a have our own understanding of course based on our own research so i would urge request everybody to please go and uh, look into competency based education there are so many definitions out there the cbc academic website has got a very very detailed information on what exactly competency based education is which we will talk about in the next session competency based assessments are incoming in the upcoming super sunday workshop and and that would be some sort of a conclusion to what this competency is all about yeah if there is any query you can put on the chat teachers i can probably answer it for another 5 to 10 minutes until then yeah so that's it from my side great interacting with one and all thank you so much jai hind if there is any queries please put it on the chat i'm here to answer some of your questions a cpd batch is starting from 29th april so if anybody is interested to participate you can join the link is given over there to give you the details on what exactly cpd is basically the 25 hours of training that you need to complete in one year the first 25 hours has to be from from the ministry of education uh, it could be cbse aicte uh, you know ciet multiple bodies and uh, the remaining 25 could be within your school a principal can conduct and certify that the teachers have completed or it could be from people like us can join yeah a uh, learning more about cb cbse academic pratiksha ma'am uh we will be anyways talking about it but as you have already asked about it so let me share the link over here to learn cbe in detail pratiksha ma'am i hope you are able to see the link on the chat uh nandini ma'am yeah a detailed a uh, session on credit system will be present uh, in the cpd program yes in super sunday it was just an introduction yeah uh freeda ma'am you need to fill the reflection form alone and your certificates will be delivered to your mail id uh nisha ma'am it is oecd organization for economic cooperation and development oecd a, a body that conducted the pisa exam Vartika ma'am, the timings will be evening five o'clock to seven o'clock for twelve days. Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday will be holidays. 
you can click on the link ma'am i think that detail, the much more details are present over there great uh, Pramila ma'am, 25 hours of training, uh, there'll be a separate Super Sunday workshop on that as well. We'll talk about how to get yourself trained on various avenues. So basically, according to the rules, there are 50 hours mandatory training that's supposed to be taken by all the teachers, including state board, CBSC, ICSC, everyone. For respective boards, there are different governing bodies, but according to CBSC and NCRT, you need to complete 25 hours, the first 25 hours. It could be so no, it's not called as first 25 hours. Basically, 25 hours you need to complete from uh, the training modules as released by Government of India. It could be a uh, Diksha portal card training. It could be a training conducted online by CIET or it could be any other body. So it should be a government body. There's another 25 hours re remaining, right? So that could be uh, undergone under anyone. It could It's, it's called as... Uh, internally organized training program, internal training programs. It could be even your principal conducting a training, you participating in that. So yeah, it could be that. Or else in that internal training, you can call me. I could also be there in your school or conduct an online training. and We can complete the remaining. So the 25 hours training that is getting launched right now is the one which you can complete from internal trainings. Yeah. That's great, Ashima ma'am. Reflection form is, is, is it mandatory for all the teachers like ad hoc contract or regular to complete the 50 hours training? Uh, Poonam ma'am, that's a very good question. I think it is yes. If it's a regular teacher, it's definitely yes. But ad hoc and contract teachers, I'm not sure. And if you are into teaching, I think uh, even if you're into ad hoc or contract, my father is also into ad hoc teaching right now. Uh, and he's completing 50 hours. So you have to complete, I guess, ma'am. And it is beneficial. Yeah, even the Super Sunday itself will give you 50 sessions if you attend continuously for one year. Link is not opening. Which link, Renuka, ma'am? I'm sorry. Reflection form is coming again on the chat. Please check that. Kuldeep, sir, you said something, but I'm not able to see it. One minute, I'm checking. I'm not able to find your link, Kuldeep, sir. If there is anything, uh, you can put it again on the chat. So, Kajal, ma'am, um, your certificates will be released mostly by Wednesday or Thursday, this Sunday and the previous Sunday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Shazia, ma'am, there will be a separate training, separate Super Sunday workshop on avenues of uh, teacher training programs. You know, where and all you can get yourself upgraded for free or for payments and things like that. There we'll talk about CIET. You just type CIET, Central Institute of Educational Training, I guess. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, that's great, Nandini, ma'am. I'm really sorry. I'll check on the audio next time. Thank you. It's working? That's great. Thank you, Pushulata, ma'am. Uh, Renuka, ma'am, uh, quite a bit of it. In Super Sunday workshop, it's going to be touched only at a very superficial level that we're doing. In CPD, it's going to be a little elaborate. If you can learn it by yourself, it's, I think it's quite possible. But yeah, it'll be covered. There'll be some, almost all the topics will be covered. Yes, in Super Sunday workshop. Mm-hmm. Uh, do design a course which involves a little more details of your credits and sure Nandini ma'am as of now even I am waiting for some more documents to be released under the national credit framework Rinki ma'am you should have ideally received it by now I am surprised that you have not received that certificate please mail it to me Vasudevan at the rate super teacher dot in I will get it immediately thank you Peri Aruna ma'am Aruna ma'am thank you so much Uh, Sunita ma'am, no. That's a good question. Of course, uh, with respect to completing 50 hours for the new year, uh, new academic year, uh, the content will be different ma'am. Yeah, you can participate. Of course, you can participate. Uh, a part of it is going to be the same, for example, the ideologies on what is competency-based education, what are the types of it. So, some of them are going to be the same, but the topics are going to get included. For example, FLN will be included. Uh, credit system will get included. Uh, uh, there are a lot of updates with respect to SAFAL exam that will get included and things like that. Yeah. 
हाँ थैंक यू रश्मि मैम इन जलॉट थैंक यू शिवानी मैम दिस नो प्रोमो कोड यू हैव टू यूज डायरेक्टली या यस यू कैन पार्टिसिपेट एस इंडिविजुअल्स इन सीपीडी प्रोग्राम्स यस uh preeti ma'am you can go to superteacher.in website and you can see upcoming events there you will get to see super sunday workshop details or else you can be part of a telegram group or a whatsapp community in which you regularly get the updates all these links are present on the google form the reflection form uh we will have very some that's a very good point child psychology there's going to be a session we spoke on multiple intelligence theory one time so we'll touch on that as well there's going to be a separate session on psychometric analysis as well what do you mean by psychometry so that's going to happen in another one or two sundays ah uh, thank you sunita ma'am please sir yes sheetal ma'am a uh, certificate by wednesday or thursday uh neetu ma'am if you're not able to join the meeting if the maximum particip participants are already there i would request you to join the youtube live link uh whenever the link is sent to respective teachers you will see that uh, youtube live link is also shared along with that pramila ma'am uh, children with special needs is conducted once last year in the month of november if i'm not wrong october november i would request you to please check that on the youtube and we'll do it again actually based on the updates that are present out there yes you are right uh, aict is conducting 72 hour ambassador training program for teachers so that the students will be benefit you can participate that as well 6 days training program right and it's there for 12 days as well yes miss ann you are absolutely right thank you suman ma'am thank you sunita ma'am No problem, Sheetal, ma'am. That's okay. Yes, there will be a session on AI, but that will happen in the month of June. Uh, no, sir. I uh, the medium of this workshop uh, cannot be Hindi. हम कर सकते हैं पर we have audience from across the country, right? Uh, so I would prefer to keep it in with one common language, and I feel that English is something that everybody could relate to. So yeah. and most of the youtube videos that are present out there on competency based education or something that's happening with respect to our indian education system a lot is there on hindi so that's one reason that i prefer to have english please correct me if you want i'll, I'll try to change i'll try to have a mix cpd link is not opening please check that swati sir cpd link please check uh, some teachers are saying it's not opening okay it's my personal id is it okay yes sheetal ma'am it's completely fine suman ma'am uh, you will be getting a notification of upcoming events as of now please join the whatsapp group uh, or the telegram community in which you can get the regular updates my mail id oh kavita ma'am it's vasudevan at the rate super teacher dot in i've put it on the chat ma'am uh preeti ma'am we are anyways going to touch upon that particular topic of training aict training will also be included in that there's a pdf document as released you can visit the aict and you will get to see aict website just google aict uh it's called as atal training a t a l a i c t e i'm forgetting training for academic learning or something that i'm forgetting the complete full form of it i'm sorry but you can check that uh ramavati ma'am i have already uh, escalated that i think uh, we will check and get back to you on that ma'am you'll definitely receive it Sure, Raghu sir, we'll let you know. Yes, was under a ma'am. Ah, uh, Prince and sir, these classes will regularly happen. I mean, you can attend how much more you want. There's no mandate on that. Sure, Miss Anne, I'll be sharing it on WhatsApp as well. Thank you, Salpa ma'am. 
yeah sure reena ma'am the registration can happen till 28 it's completely fine yeah okay i think great good to see you tamana ma'am thank you so much thank you kavita ma'am thank you sure i am sharing the video link on the ma'am so for that i need to go over here and uh, this is basically cbse and british council video Pratiksha ma'am, you need to be part of a teachers community, which is basically WhatsApp community or a Telegram link. In Telegram, your number will be very private. I mean, other people cannot see your number, phone numbers, but in WhatsApp they can. So you can choose one of the platforms and you can join. Uh, you have my number in the reflection form right on the top. Uh, so let me check if it's there. I hope it's there. Yes, it's there. So and even Telegram invite link is also there. You can click on that and you can join that. it's just going to be a detailed uh, session uh, prince and sir i mean uh, if you look into the cpd program under 25 hours there's going to be an interaction that's happening hands on activities will be there uh, there's going to be a lot of discussions and debates a typical training program super sunday workshop is like a, more like a news announcement right there it's going to be detailed that's it not not a major difference uh, the complete details will be present on the website great kavita ma'am thank you thank you no problem selvi ma'am sure rashmita ma'am please message me i shall do that oh that's very nice of you ranjini ma'am thank you so much for putting it you are right ranjini ma'am I'm so sorry, Doctor Sunil Kumar sir. I'll try to have both mix of Sanskrit and Hindi as well. So just imagine if I go with uh, Hindi, then then there are a lot of teachers who do not know Hindi, right? Especially in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. So yeah, that's how I prioritized. Uh, and I probably I was okay with some teachers not understanding, you know, while choosing English. So sorry, I completely understand. I'm helpless. Uh, Kavita ma'am, my school service twenty years. Okay, understand. Sure, ma'am. Sure. You just message me. I shall send, share the link with you. No problem at all. Can we have AI for education, which means studies more broadly? Yes, yes, Kajal ma'am. There's going to be a separate session on AI inclusion into the curriculum in the month of June. The cost is going to be two thousand five hundred. Yeah, twenty five years, hundred rupees per hour. CBC norms. I am trying to collect as many numbers and queries as possible. Let's see. Druti ma'am, it is right on the top, but don't worry. You can check the Zoom chat right now. that is also there right on the top suman ma'am no problem you can message me i'll i'll share the details okay great how do we teachers become more competent to implement the cb it's it, it's going to take some time definitely very good question which lakshmi ma'am uh you need to understand the methodologies of cb that's how art integration credit system lot of changes so once you get into the zone of a uh, competency based education then really implement it just practice a little bit of practice and it's not too different it's already there it's just a little extra yeah there's no promo code uh, prince and sir yeah 
Okay, it's time to close. Thank you so much to all the teachers. I'll get back to you again with competency-based assessments in the upcoming Super Sunday workshop. See you next Sunday at 10 o'clock.